morning. A few announcements about things happening here at All Saints or in our general vicinity, anyway. Um, thank you to everyone who has shown up with all kinds of great things for the St. Mark's Food Pantry as we work to kind of create our own little loaves and fishes miracle here. Um, we are going to continue collecting items, well, we collect items for St. Mark's all year long, but that specific focus, um, we are going to continue through the end of this month. So you've got a couple more weeks to kind of add to that collection cart in the narthex. And then we will kind of return to always having that part available, um, but not with quite the same gusto as we're trying to do this month. So thank you to everyone who has given already. If you haven't had a chance to do that, but would still like to, and are wondering what things you could pick up, there are um, little lists available in one of the lunch bags that is on the display. So you can pick that up and grab some items the next time you're at the store. Uh, our Monday night book study is almost coming to a conclusion, but we will meet again tomorrow night to discuss chapter six. Um, hope that you will join us, whether you've been coming all along or are going to jump in right at the end. And then a reminder that this Wednesday evening at Bethel Lutheran Church uh, downtown, uh, Dr. Jacqueline Bussey will be speaking. Um, she is someone who recently spoke at our ELCA youth gathering in New Orleans, uh, and I had a chance to hear her. I wasn't there, but I watched the online version of that, um, and she is a dynamic speaker and has a great message, and so I encourage you to attend. Uh, I am planning to go, so if anyone wants to carpool to that event, um, be in touch with me, and we can make those arrangements. Then on Saturday, the 24th of this month, you are invited to help serve our neighbors through Love Dane. Uh, it is a, a plan through the collaboration project for churches to come together to help serve our neighbors, specifically our schools, to help them get ready for a new school year. And so there are a couple of projects in our general neighborhood that we're invited. You can serve anywhere you like. Um, but a couple of projects in our close neighborhood that I invite you to consider are helping out at Orchard Ridge Elementary School or at Leopold. Um, Orchard Ridge, there are a variety of projects happening, both outside and inside, um, doing some yard work and helping prepare classrooms. Uh, at Leopold, the primary goal is to put up a bunch of bulletin boards throughout the school and uh, if there is time left over, there might be some outdoor projects, but uh, those pre-made bulletin boards, you won't have to be designing anything or creating anything, just putting things on. Um, and so you can sign up for either of those. The link is in our weekly email. Um, or if you are a QR code person, um, there is a poster with a QR code right outside my office. Uh, and that will take you to that sign up as well. And last but not least, I hope that you have September 8th on your calendar as we will gather here, but outside for outdoor worship and uh, a picnic to kick off a, our fall and to celebrate being together. Um, all kinds of fun things happening that day from a water balloon toss to face painting to a bags tournament. And so I invite you to join us for that. Um, meat will be provided, and we're inviting others to bring sides to go along with that for that picnic. And you can sign up for that either on the form of the Netflix or online. There is an online sign of genius available for that as well, which came out in the Thursday email. So, hope you will plan to join us for that event. Um, it is always good to be together for worship, but also good to be together for fellowship and time together in that way. I invite you now to stand as you are able as we begin our worship with our confession and forgiveness. <laughs> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Amen. 
drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe that there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which you live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into eternal life. Amen. Tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough. 
Now, O oh Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly, an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him and said, Get up and eat. Otherwise, the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank. Then he went in the strength of that food, forty days and forty nights to borrow the mount of God, the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The next will be a, a responsive reading from Psalm 34, verses 1 through 8. I will bless the Lord at all times. The praise of God shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the lowly hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt God's name together. I sought the Lord who answered me and delivered me from all my terrors. Look upon the Lord and be radiant, and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me and saved me. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear the Lord and delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who take refuge in God. The second reading is from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 25 through chapter 5, verse 2. A reading from Ephesians. So then, putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. And do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, rather let them labor and work honestly with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath, and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God, as beloved children, and live in love, as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Do not complain among yourselves. 
No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day, as it is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Gospel of the Lord. When my parents celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary, they decided they didn't want a party. They wanted a trip with their kids. And so the six of us, my mom and dad, my brother and I, and our spouses, went on a cruise together. There were all kinds of stories that I could tell from that particular trip, but today I am thinking specifically about the food we enjoyed. We explored the different places to eat on the boat, and my dad often opted for the buffet, because there he could get exactly what he wanted. But on the last night of the cruise, we convinced him to eat in the formal dining room, and it was a night to remember. <laughs> Our waiters were wonderful and really fun. We had a great meal and were just about to enjoy our dessert. Now one thing you need to know about my dad is that he is a very thoughtful eater. We often joke that he is the person who will leave one tiny bite on his plate because he's full and he doesn't need it, rather than most of us who would clean our plates because that's what you do. We've actually begun to call that a ro pulling a roger if someone leaves just one bite on their plate. So as our desserts were placed in front of us that evening, most of us dug right in, but not my dad. I'm not sure if he was in the middle of telling a story or if he was just waiting to let his dinner settle, but our waiter noticed that while the rest of us were enjoying our dessert, my dad had not yet started on him. So after a little light-hearted teasing, our waiter picked up my dad's fork, grabbed a bite of his dessert, and fed it to him. <laughs> and without missing a beat, my dad opened his mouth and gladly received that bite. We all erupted in laughter, and as much fun as we had on that trip, I think that moment is probably the most memorable. It's not every day that I see someone, especially a stranger, <coughs> feeding my fully capable dad. And yet, each day, we are fed by our loving God who provides all we need. We're in the midst of a lot of stories about God feeding people. It started a few weeks ago with the feeding of the 5,000 when Jesus took just five loaves and two fish, and had leftovers after feeding more than 5,000 people. On that same day, we heard from the Old Testament the story of the prophet Elisha doing a similar thing, though with a few more resources and not quite as many people. Then we heard the story of the Israelites in the wilderness, receiving quail in the evening and manna every morning. And today, we hear the story of the prophet Elijah, frightened and weary, having a cake baked for him by an angel of the Lord as he rested. All of these stories come alongside the promise of Jesus, the first of his I am statements in the Gospel of John. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. 
In our gospel reading for this morning, we hear that kind of expanded, both by Jesus and the people who are questioning who he is. I'm the bread that came down from heaven. And Jesus takes that question from those who are listening to him, wondering how he can be saying such a thing. And connects it to a familiar story to help them better understand. He says, I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I give for the life of the world is my flesh. Jesus knows that his listeners are familiar with the story of the manna in the wilderness. And so he compares and contrasts these two different breads from heaven. God provided manna, which provided life in the wilderness. But that bread didn't keep. It was provided each day, but would only last for a day. And while it kept them alive during their time in the wilderness, those who ate manna still eventually died. While Jesus is comparing himself to the manna to help them understand the promise of God's provision, he also draws a stark contrast. The bread of life that he's talking about won't just last for a day will last forever. And those who eat of this bread will have eternal life. As Debbie Thomas writes, manna sustains the Israelites in their long wilderness, just as the angel's cake sustains Elijah and his. And so Jesus desires to sustain us in ours, to be our journeying bread for every road trip, every perilous ride, every long haul, every rocky path. He desires to be our substance and our strength, not in some magical, cure-all way, but in ways that meet us in our real lives, our real challenges, our real fears and griefs and hopes. Because Jesus knows better than anyone that the journey is hard. He knows it's too much for us to handle on our own. He knows we need bread that sustains his bread, his flesh, given for the life of the world. What Jesus promises is not just bread. When we pray each Sunday that God would give us our daily bread, we're not praying for a piece of raspberry, rosemary, pasha, or a loaf of honey meat. We're asking for everything we need. Not just the tangible things of food, water, and shelter, but so much more than that. Paul Strobel sums this up as he writes, In Jesus, we have everything we need for life, if we define life more broadly than just by our physical needs. Jesus provides God's grace, God's help, guidance, and assistance. He provides access to God for our prayers. He helps resolve some of our problems and adverse situations. Other situations he does not resolve for us. But even then, he remains present for us as we bring our needs to God. He provides life forever with God. Everything that we need is offered freely to us. We just need to open ourselves to receive it. When our waiter tried to feed my dad that bite of his dessert, he could have refused to take it. If he felt the whole shtick was silly or embarrassing, he could have simply waved him off. And we would have chuckled, but I probably wouldn't be talking about it today. The reason that moment was so memorable is because my dad actually opened his mouth and took that bite, allowing our waiter to feed him. Jesus stands before us each and every day with more than a fork full of everything we need and invites us to take and eat. 
We simply need to open ourselves to receiving. Or maybe more accurately, to open ourselves to seeing that we have already received it. We practice this in a real way each Sunday morning when we come to the table with hands extended to receive a small bite of bread. But we know and trust that this little morsel of bread satisfies way more than our physical hunger. Because let's be real, that little taste of bread isn't going to curb anyone's physical hunger. But in that small piece of bread, we receive Jesus himself, his love and grace, his strength and hope, his comfort and his joy. Everything we need to sustain us in this life and the next. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Take and eat. Christ provides for us all that we need. Church, 
by your spirit, root your church around the globe in prayer mm -hmm. and spiritual practices. Merciful God. Mm -hmm. This is our prayer. We rely on the goodness of your creation in everything we do. We pray for trees that offer shade and for our fellow creatures that depend on the trees for shelter and food. Sustain the work of all who advocate for our forests and wilderness areas. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Guide our leaders and nations with a spirit of justice and mercy. Let no evil come out of our mouths, but rather let us extend grace. We pray for our enemies. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Sustain feeding ministries and organizations such as ELCA World Hunger and our local food pantries, especially St. Mark's. We work and pray for a day when hunger is no more. Merciful God. This is our prayer. We pray for this congregation and for all who are gathered. Be present among any who cannot be with us today. And be with all who are hurting grieving, or ill, especially Mary, Angie and her family, Jean, Heather, Barb, Patty, John, John, and all those we name before you now, aloud or silent. Merciful God. We remember the saints who have gone before us in faith. Trusting in the promise of the resurrection, we find hope in your communion of saints of all times and all places. Merciful God. Receive our prayers. We lift up these prayers to you, gracious God. Receive them into your holy keeping. Amen. You may be seated, and I invite any children to come up and join me for the children's message. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. How are you guys this morning? Good, awesome. So I have a couple of different bags with me today. Which one of these would you say is a gift? The sparkly one? Which one of you, if I told you you could have either one of these, mm -hmm. which one would you pick? I would choose that one. You would choose this one? Yeah. You would choose the crackers? <laughs> you want food? <laughs> so what, what do you think might be in the sparkly bag? Uh, no, no, right? Like, when we get a gift, right, and it comes in a sparkly bag like this, we're kind of excited because we don't know what it is. We expect that it's probably going to be something that we'll be excited about, right? You want to open it and see what's in there? Friends, 
And so I think often we get caught up in the sparkly gifts, those amazing things that show up for us. And we forget to recognize Jesus in the ordinary things that we get each day. We pray with you. Dear Jesus, we thank you for all of the gifts that you give us, especially those ordinary things that it is easy for us to miss recognizing as a gift from you. Help us to not only see those gifts, but share those gifts with others in simple things like a smile, a hug, or the gift of some crackers. In your name we pray. Amen. You guys stand up and help me share the peace. I invite you to stand as well. You ready? Yeah. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also Let us share signs of peace with one another. That's peace. I'm going to take these crackers and share them. Oh, I'm going to take the bag home with me, actually. But thanks for asking.
Please stand as you are able. Let us join together in our offertory prayer. <clears throat> Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast with plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. Broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come, for all are welcome. You may be seated. <laughs>
Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen.